Hello, yes, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. Today, what we're gonna do is take a look at what parts you need and what you need to do to fit a jib traveler system to your Hobie 16. Okay, so this is a nice upgrade that you can give your Hobie 16 if it hasn't got this system. On most modern racing Hobie 16s, there's this jib cleat system where you have the jib traveler that you're actually able to control using a rope from the windward side of the boat. So you could actually change the jib traveler while you're out on the trapeze. Then when you release it, pull the sheet a little bit and it comes back in. One of the key parts that you're gonna need is a jib traveler car itself. This is the part that slides up and down the track. Of course, you're gonna need a track of some description on the boat. On the modern Hobie 16s, there's actually a track that's built into the beam. Whereas on the older boats, you might have a track which is riveted on. Um, it's unlikely that you wouldn't have a track at all, but if you haven't got one, you can buy a piece of track like this, rivet it on, and then the jib traveler car will go into the track there. We then need to have a jib cleat of some description. On the standard boats coming from Hobie Europe, they use a Harken cleat on a swivel which mounts on the front beam. On the American boats, there's actually on the jib traveler car itself, there's a plastic plate with a cleat on, so the cleat slides with the traveler. Now those ones are pretty expensive. These are pretty juicy as well, but there are alternatives that you can get. We're then going to need some way of securing the jib traveler line. So again, on the European boats, we have this system with a cleat and then a block. Uh, which is quite an extravagant system. It's all Harken. Just those pieces would probably be somewhere in the region of $50. So you can do it for a lot less. A really good alternative would just be to use a small cleat like this, uh, which will come through the turning block, through there. So doing the job of that Harken on the other boat for probably a third of the cost. And then this is the trick shot. We're gonna need some sort of turning block on the outside of the boat. Here we can see on Chris's boat, this was actually featured on Show Us Your Cat. He's riveted a shoulder block onto the corner casting, which looks like it should work very nicely indeed. In fact, the job that Chris has done on his boat is a good, guideline for what you should be looking at if you want to take on this job. So for the routing of the jib traveler line, this is gonna fasten to the jib traveler car, whichever style of traveler car you choose. It's then gonna go outboard to whichever turning block you choose to use there. And then it will come back. You could put your cleat here for fastening where you're going to adjust that line or if you want to do it more like the modern boats it will then come to here and then what we like to do here is take this line all the way across the boat and that could either tie off around the shroud or if you've got a convenient hole in your trampoline like we do you could just go around the sidebar and tie it off there very tidy and then with the Trentec jib sheet system, that's gonna fasten with a, a stopper knot on the outside of the traveler car. It's then gonna go forwards through a block and that block is what is gonna shackle onto the clue of the jib. It's then gonna come back through the cleat and then it's gonna go across the boat and do the same thing on the other side. We also have on these traveler cars, there's another hole on the inside, and this is to attach a piece of shock cord to, and this shock cord is gonna be pulling 
the travelers inboard so that when you're not pulling them out, they'll automatically come into the middle of the boat. I've just done the measurements for the jib traveler control line. That needs to be three meters on each side. You, you want to be using maybe a five mil uh, rope with a hard wearing outer sheath. Uh, three meters long, five millimeter rope there would be ideal. If you are of course using perhaps slightly chunkier turning blocks and cleats, then you could probably use a six mil rope, which might be a bit easier on the hands, but five mil certainly does the job. It doesn't need to be a fancy rope with a Dyneema core, because there's not so much load on there, so you can use a less expensive rope with a polyester core. So for the complete shopping list of what it is that you need, you're gonna need two traveler cars, two jib cleats, one for each side, and then two cleats for the tra jib traveler control line, and then two jib traveler control lines, and then two flat mounted blocks, which you're gonna mount on the corner castings. You should have your jib sheets already, uh, but you could replace the jib sheets as well if they're looking a bit tired. There you go, that is all there is to it. There is a bit of shopping involved, uh, but it's quite straightforward to fit. You might have to rivet some fittings to your front beam. So just uh, really measure twice and rivet once to make sure that you're getting everything in the right spot. I've put a link in the description below to a Hobie 16 rope lengths matrix, where if you want to know how long various ropes are on the Hobie 16, then you can find it there. Other than that, thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been useful. And thanks again to Chris for sending those pictures of your jib system. Chris has done a very nice job there. Um, but we'll be back soon with some more on Joyrider TV. Thank you very much.